This tells the story of a historical event from the mid-19th century. Thomas was a janitor, but he loved medicine and often studied medical theories on his own. One day, the professor pointed at an instrument on the table and asked him what it was. Van Slyke Neal Gas Manometer, sir, doctor. The professor was shocked that he actually knew the answer. Then he wanted to look at his hands and gave him a pair of tweezers to pick up a test tube. He picked it up easily, so the professor asked him to switch to his left hand. He was just as skillful with it and placed the test tube on the rack. He even picked up the wooden stopper nearby at the same time and inserted it into the bottle. The professor was surprised and pleased. The next day, Thomas became the professor's assistant. He cherished this opportunity, so he studied hard every day reading and researching even while on the road and continuing to study after returning home. Every time the professor explained knowledge to him, he would write it down in his little notebook. The professor also acknowledged his ability. One day, while preparing for a surgical experiment on a dog, the professor let Thomas be the lead surgeon. The professor drew a line for him and asked him to make the incision along the line. He also tested Thomas on the purpose of this experiment. Thomas replied, to locate the pulmonary artery and then induce traumatic shock. Because in the past, patients were treated only by stopping bleeding and contracting blood vessels, which led to massive blood loss and many deaths. This time, the aim was to save the patient through blood transfusion. His answer was correct. Then they observed the pressure gauge. The reading kept dropping, and the professor began to doubt himself, thinking maybe his method was wrong. But miraculously, the pressure gauge started rising. That was the return of life. They looked at each other and smiled. They had succeeded. Years of research had proven correct. At that moment, the professor asked to check the recorder. However, Thomas didn't know what that was. The professor got angry and pointed at the metal container nearby, saying that their work for the day was wasted. He shouted at Thomas loudly. Do you have sawdust or just plain shit for brains? Thomas didn't expect the professor to have such a bad temper. He quietly walked away. The professor looked at the results on the surgical table, then turned around and saw the notebook. It recorded every detail of the surgery, with illustrations and explanations. It was even more detailed and accurate than the recorder. So, he ran out to find Thomas, admitted he was wrong, and said it wouldn't happen again. Seeing the professor's sincerity, Thomas forgave him. Soon, their achievements were widely applied. This method of treating traumatic shock through blood transfusion improved the survival rate of soldiers. The professor was awarded at a banquet and was appointed as head of the surgery department at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. Meanwhile, Thomas worked as a waiter at the banquet. Others didn't know that he had participated in the research. That night, they also discussed the blue baby heart surgery which would later go down in history. At that time, he had already worked with the professor for 12 years. Not long after, they went to the Perkins School of Medicine. However, Thomas could only enter the hospital through the back door. In that era of racial discrimination, having a black doctor was shocking to many, but he didn't care what others thought. He focused on his research. One day, Professor Helen introduced him to blue baby syndrome. This was caused by insufficient blood flow to the lungs, making the skin and lips appear purple. In 1940, this was untreatable because the rule in medicine was never touch the heart. 